Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. My first YouTube video and accessory, the topic of why you should be very careful with your Karsher FC5 device. Now, don't get me wrong, it works beautifully when it works. And here is a video on how our squid in less than 10 miles of use. We are in the process of finishing the third bottle, well, even started it, it's not even finished. The third bottle of official Gaussian Concentrate. Yeah, and um, our squid in about 100, 120 uses on a relatively small surface. So nothing really appropriate to a product bearing such a name. Kalsha was supposed to be quality items and they are. The plastic is very well made, moldings are perfect, it's very sturdy. However, now it's just good, take a last look at it for landfill. Here we have the proof of purchase of this device and <laughs> part of the carcass which is actually a landfill scrap part now too. So, furthermore on the inside, the dirty little secrets of Kasher, we find the brush roller spinning mechanism. Rollers are attached here, brushes, the fluffy rollers, and inside we have a motor, electric motor, which was powered by these two leads and uh, as you can see we have a lot of small rusty parts which already tell the story. Now this product is not really made to be serviceable any because despite having a lot of screws it also uses some uh, click and clucking plastic snap in assembly process. Uh, not necessarily compatible with disassembly and uh, reassembly afterwards. But anyway, so let's go back to it, to the essence of my rant. Right, here we will see the motor, the motor that drives the brushes. Well, not really a nice picture though, eh? you can see it's corroded badly. And mind, this thing happened after about 100 uses. I get 120, 10 mouths, right, on a relatively small surface, using only specified kosher concentrates and water, exactly what the product is made for. First thing, first, let's take a look at the roller bearing, roller bearings here. You can see they are corroded and quite badly indeed. So, in other words, on this side here, on this side we have the brush, here the same. And a few, maybe, I don't know, 10 millimeters, we have a bearing which is not even protected by a ring, by an o-ring or sam ring and just some sort of plastic bushing which by no means can constitute a reliable humidity repellent protection and on this side we go directly into the matter a bearing which is only shielded but not waterproof. Now here goes the timing belt which is not part of this video for simplicity reasons. So that's why we have these bearings are rusty. Almost almost seized. They can seize and they will at any time as soon as the thing starts to spin a little bit other loads. You can hear it's maybe you cannot but I feel the when I stress the bearing I feel already how rough it spins. Otherwise a big missing chunk of part here 
is the uh, safety clutch. Uh, safety clutch, which has been cut. I'll explain you later what for, for what purpose. It will go this way, and here the pinion will drive this wheel. That's a pinion wheel. Yeah, and as you can see already, it's plastic, and this plastic has been machined by the pinion, leaving almost no usable tooth volume. I mean, any pinion would slide on it. And obviously, it had two bearings at each side, which are about of the same manufacturer as the other ones, and they were seized, massively seized. I've cut them. To show you the state of the inner cage, and as you can see, they have been penetrated by water and heavily corroded. Now, this is not a bearing shield with a um, joint, it's uh, simply a shielded bearing. It doesn't have a uh, centering or a V-ring or any kind of protection. It's just one of those cheapo bearings from, uh, I don't know, you could find them in a roller skate or a toy. The other interesting part is the torque limiting clutch. Torque limiting clutch, which is cut here, was found to be penetrated by water as well and solid. It will not spin under any load. It's protection function for overload condition is completely lost meaning that if those bearings are blocked if they are seized well the pinion here will try to drive through the overloaded plastic gears get here the contact point and steel against plastic, well, we know who wins, and uh, the result is precisely that. They have been machined, machined out pretty well. So, now the whole question is, could this have been prevented? The answer is yes. This is a clicket ratchet type of, or was a sort of ratchet type Clutch. Actually, it's pretty much comparable to the torque limiting clutch you have on your drill, on your cordless drill. Uh, only that this one has only one factory setting, and then um, if it was protected by even the slightest amount of water repelling oil, then water would have no effect on it, but it didn't happen. It was delivered, assembled without any protection. You can see the status of this universal motor. I checked the brushes, they're not even too much worn out, which means that he hasn't been used that much. It's sort of new, except that it's completely corroded. This could have been prevented as well. I mean, we have a lot of significantly performing um, anti-corrosion coats available. Even if it's just a small quantity of foil, it would have prevented this state. But no, it didn't. It was just put there, clicked in place, assembled, and you have to deal with that. So, this is what will happen to your magnificent FC5 floor and mop cleaner. There is some grease here, obviously. <laughs> at the wrong spot that is underneath and where the grease was <laughs> it didn't rest that you cannot compare just that amount of grease somehow pond it on the mother and uh, or in the case of look look at the nice corrosion we have and mind this is a device which is about 10 months old not much use eh? Yeah, and this is what you pay in excess of 250 bucks for for a motor that will corrode because simply it has to work in an environment where water is sprayed on the roads that would have to spin and clean the floor. 
Now, when he worked, it was a beauty, really. So, why it quit? It quit because it was programmed to do so. This is called programmed obsolescence. Even if we found, finally, a small drop of foil here on the motor, on the other side, on the wrong side, where it wouldn't protect anything good. I mean, here, this part was left dry. There is absolutely no corrosion protection inside of the clutch. Mind, a safety clutch, which is supposed to work in a wet environment, very close to water, without any protection. And this is the overload clutch. So if it fails, the pinion will machine the crown, like here. Now, never mind those notches, I just try to harness with my uh, cutter. And it's really, I don't know what kind of plastic it is, but it's really nothing, not the match for the steel pinion, in any case. Yeah, this chiply made construction is the smoking gun. This is how it's supposed to fail as soon as humidity makes its way inside and locks, seizes the clutch torque limiter. The end corrodes completely, the other way is completely unprotected bearings. Here you see the razor cage, which I managed to pull out almost entirely. It's full with rust, it's even chunks of rust fall apart. Here we have the inner racing, the inner cage, part of it, see, it's actually rusted under the shaft, uh, it's kind of curious, so water got also inside, got underneath the shaft to the inner cage. Yeah, and we have a lot of other interesting artifacts on the type of bearing used, it's only a shielded, not a waterproof bearing, yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what you pay for your new brand new and shiny FC5 floor mopper from Kasha. Now, this would have been a warranty case, typically, except that our purchase ticket was deemed invalid due to discoloration. Now, these are printed on thermal paper, and unless you snap a photocopy of it today, uh, you purchase your device uh, within a couple of miles, the thermic paper, will turn a sort of grayish and we couldn't deem and claim our warranty. So I decided to chop it up and free and warn you guys what will happen to your magnificent mm, floor cleaner machine because it really works. When it works it's a beauty. I mean, there's no discussion. It's very robustly built. He has a lot of tight fitting tolerance plastics. It's it's not a cheap device to make actually. A lot of engineering went in, including a lot of engineering for programmed obsolescence. This is the smoking gun. We have a reduction gear which is supposed to work in a wet environment and where everything is made so that the slightest amount of humidity would corrode essential parts and preventing from normal operation. This thing will be unserviceable as soon as humidity starts to make its way. And now, how are you supposed to keep humidity away without any veerings or semmerings? Uh, how are you supposed to keep humidity away? I mean, this thing is not sealed by no way. And if you cannot keep humidity away, which is maybe a good thing, because if you don't keep it away, actually what goes in will go out easily. But at least they should have taken care to protect it, which they didn't. Because obviously, if you don't protect it, then definitely you have to sell a new one when this one breaks. And that's how they do it. Now, I will definitely go and buy another one, because we need it. It's really a nice device. And in a future video, I'll show you how to take care of the problem and preventively protect it. Do some prophylaxy work uh, very easily without even too much disassembly because I found out a way to protect this whole otherwise extremely crappy aspect of this device. And uh, yeah, as soon as I get the new one, before even the first use, I'll show you how to preserve your investment. So, thank you, Kasher. 
there are a lot of nice videos showing more or less fancy ladies cleaning extremely fancy flats and floors with it's a beauty thing and everybody would believe that it's supposed to last given the brand culture oh come on they make professional stuff these guys right eh? well not smoking gun programmed of solicence good luck with that